Next, we continue on the information for decision making and control. Technology it provides vehicle for managers to access information for decision making. Uh, uh, management information systems include information reporting. Do you guys know what's reporting? You know, sometimes if you have, you know, you can get a report, your transcript, a report, your bank statement. Uh, decision support, you make decisions. Executive information system. What's the difference between executive and non-executive? Executive is information for managers to make decisions. Information provides systems for control. Do you know what control? Like you check. Remember when you drive a car? You have to have there a check for how much oil or gas you still have in your car, right? So that's, you know, dashboard. You see, okay, uh, you know, uh, revenues are good. Uh, employees are performing, you know, how many people in classes, uh, for the bank, how much money we have in the branch, and also this balance scorecard. Uh, here it says uh, managerial control and decision making, uh, corporate databases, uh, information decision making, uh, information control, uh, you can make decisions, executive, reporting. Uh, feedback, uh, balance, scorecard, uh, and then management control systems. Any questions on this? No, this is the same thing we discussed before, which is here for control, you check, and here for decision making, you make a decision. Okay? Now, how do you do this feedback? This is how it works. It goes on a cycle. Now, it starts here with you. what is your strategic goal? Okay? You establish metrics and standards. You compare metrics with actual performance, and then you take corrective action. Let's take an example. Let's say, for example, my goal is that I want to get one million customers. Okay. Now, my established metrics. Let's say every I want one million customer at the end of the year. Every month, I want to get at least one hundred fifty thousand customers. Okay. Then that's a metric. One fifty at the month. Here, you compare. So you wait one month. How many customers? 150,000 or more? Good. Less? Oh, not good. And then you start to take corrective actions. If we're good, that's great. If we're not good, we check. What do we need to fix? Do you see? Now the computer system helps us do that. Do you see? Management control system. Uh, here you have formal routine reports procedures. For example, you know, uh, you know, for the bank every year, they have to have an, an, uh, an annual report from the information systems they have. They get reports, maybe the procedures, how to do it. Formalized information uh, based on your activities. Uh, so what you do, it's written down. Uh, and you maybe sometimes the computer check. Anyone have been online, some of these websites that says registration process? And I tell you one, write this. Then you click next. And then it tells you, hey, wait. Your phone number is not correct. Wait, your email is missing. Wait, your, you see, that's online control system. It checks by itself. And it goes, uh, you can do it for uh, uh, financial reports. For example, if you don't pay, it will flag your account, block your account. That's control. Reward system, like if you get high grades, then the system will say honor list. Quality control system. Do you know what's quality control? You guys have taken a quality control or not yet? We'll take a quality control system. So a full class talks about how we check quality. For example, uh, you know, if we are uh, selling, uh, let's say if we are Pepsi and we are selling every day, we get to report how many we sold. Then now there's a drop in sales. Check. There's a drop in sales. So what's going on? Managers must define what standards. So what is the standard? For example, here, Standard LIU students, you have to get, uh, let's say, 60% 60, 60 to pass. So if you're less than 60, it will show on the system. F. You can't take the next course, you see. So that's another control. And this is the standard we set. Level of focus and control systems. So you can do it on an organization or department. So organization on the big company, balance scorecard. Ma ma finance, customer, employee, management control, strategy map, you visualize how the company is working. Departments, it's on the department level. So maybe we do it for the school of business. We do it for this class, right? Everyone, you have to make a, a post of your project. Uh, major prospects of balanced scorecards. This is a balanced scorecard. You guys remember this from a previous chapter? 
So here we have financial. This is the question. Do action contributes to better financial performance? For example, do we measure profit, return on investment? Here, growth. Are we learning? Example, do we have uh, continuous process improvement? Do we have employee retention? And then here we've got internal business process. Uh, do uh, work process add value? Uh, measurement is we measure order rate fulfillment, cost per order. And then here customers. Uh, we have customers happy, customer loyalty. Now here the third level, which is strategic value. Intranet, uh, knowledge management, uh, ERP and tool. Are you guys okay with these three, you know the difference, uh, these four, the difference between them? If you don't know any one of these, raise your hand. Which one? Do you know what's an intranet? Uh, yes, sir. Intranet is the network that's local. What do you guys think the power of a local net? Uh, no, the, no, see, uh, internet is the internet that everyone connects to the whole world. But the intranet, it is only accessible inside your company. You see, for example, if you go to Kak Bank, do you think they, uh, their network is connected to the internet? No, no. Maybe yes, but probably no. They have their own private network. It's called intranet. So everything happens inside the company has nothing to do with the outside. So they have like an internet, but it's inside. Do you see? Only inside the company. Uh, knowledge management is when you keep your information and uh, this way you can learn from it in the future. Uh, Web 2.0, that's when, uh, that's the new internet, which is very dynamic. Now, remember, see you guys are already familiar with this two po uh, Web 2.0 because you have been using it. But if you lived 20 years ago, every computer system has used to speak its own language. Do you understand this? But now, the information is highly connected. For example, if someone says like, you immediately see the like of your friend. Do you see, you don't need to refresh the page or, do you see? Uh, so this amount of interactivity is very high. Do you see? Uh, and then we've got, uh, and there's some other tools. And then we have the ERP system. And the ERP system, what do we say was ERP system? ERP system, it's how you manage every resource in your company in one database. Do you see? How many of you attended the Yemen soft uh, training? Anyone? Oh, there's a, there's a training we do every year where you go, students, they go on the ERP by Yemen soft. Do you know Yemen soft? Mm -hmm. They have computers, they have soft software, they put it in companies. And this is an ERP system. Basically, if you go to the system, you can see all of the transaction, all of the inventory, all of the employees, all of the money they have, all of the cash, bank statements, and and all of this is an ERP system. So it helps them understand their inventory, their assets, their uh, liabilities. Uh, to approach knowledge management, you have tacit management and uh, explicit management. Do you guys know what's tacit knowledge and uh, ex uh, explicit knowledge? Do you guys remember this? Uh, tacit knowledge is knowledge in people's head. Explicit, when people take it from their head and document it. Now, the idea here is uh, you need to go on a cycle. Do you guys know what's a cycle? Go a cycle. You have information, and then uh, it's person to person, and then it's people to uh, documents. You need to develop an electronic document system that codify, store, uh, disseminate, and allow reuse of knowledge. For example, every course here, it has a code, and this code is used on the system. And then inside the system, you can see the code, and the code has the syllabus. And now, this information, we give it to you in class. And then after we finish telling it to you, you will learn, and then you write it down, right? This way, when you write it down, we make sure that you understood it. And then maybe if you write it down as, let's say, a research project, then this research project can be used for the future, right? If you are a company, let's say the McDonald's case, they uh, make burgers, and they make french fries, and they service to customers, and people have it as tacit knowledge between people. So now I tell my employees, and all the people learn, this is tacit, 
right? So it's a person to person. You develop a network of linking people so that tacit knowledge can be shared. You invest moderately in information technology that go to facilitate the conversation. So maybe I go on Google Hangout and explain to all other employees how to do french fries, how to do burgers. And now I record it. After I record it, it becomes documented. So maybe after five years, new employees come. What do they do? They go to the documentation. They read it. After they read it, they learn it. And then they share it with other employees. Do you see? So this goes the cycle. Do you guys remember uh, companies that they don't do this good knowledge management? What will happen to them? It will be difficult for them to stay with the same knowledge. 